What do you think, what buddy? I've been thinking or, about. What do you? Okay. What it's are you thinking about? It's been obvious to me for some time that, mm -hmm. for some reason, the fundamental What's been claim obvious of postmodernism is something mm, like an postmodernism. Okay. So, what you're saying is that the uh, the <laughs> the postmodernism interpretations and no canonical overarching narrative. Yeah. Oh, okay. People don't agree on the truth, is, right? Okay. Narratives. Yeah. Now what? Well. I would say probably the first thing we would do was uh, make a list of everybody's narratives uh, and see which one applies the most to reality. Now, of course, no narrative. He probably disagree no value with that structure because people would argue. Overarching. So what the hell are you going to do with yourself? How are you going to orient yourself in the world? Well, you have to pick a narrative. Pick the one that makes the most sense, bucko. Well, <laughs> hey, the buddy. have no answer to that. Oh, so no, they don't, do they? they? Well, then, I don't know. Without... Don't be postmodernist, then. Who cares? Just fucking pick the one that works, dude. Literally, you're disagreeing with the narrative of postmodernism, so just don't. Just go with yours. Who gives a fuck? I mean, that's what you do. Yours has no validity to it, so that's why people disagree with you, but, uh, you know, that's your choice, buddy. So, uh... Yeah. With the cognitive it shouldn't be, dissonance. though. That's what free, 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 uh, free speech kinda, is for. This, this loose egalitarianism, uh, egalitarian Marxism. What, what, is, and, what is that you mean? And it, what do you mean by that? What's a, what's a loose egalitarian Marxism? If they concerned with coherence, that would be a problem. But since... Uh, well, I'm pretty concerned with a coherence, so uh, explain. They're not concerned with coherence. It doesn't seem to be okay. A well, that's but the the force that's driving uh -huh. the activism is mostly the Marxism rather than yeah. The well, I am an anarchist. Uh, Marx and uh, Kropotkin had some good ideas. Have you read Marx? You probably have, and you probably didn't understand because you're you're too stupid. But um, Jordan, he's got some points. Uh, <laughs> he didn't, like you know, he didn't tell gloss. the Russians. I to, uh, you know, turn into the USSR. He didn't tell China to worship Mao. Uh, you know, and some people didn't actually teach him. Theory is being used to, what, fuel you don't even understand him. And to produce so maybe he should have been a bit more clear. Let's, let's, maybe he should have had a bit more clear clarity in his writing. Or maybe people should actually teach real Marxism, Marxism instead of whatever the hell, your cultural Bolshevism, cultural Marxist so, but Jewish no addenda, you it. fucking weirdo. But I mean, like, it's not like I'm making this up. Crazy you know, anti-Semitic old man. Derrida himself regarded, and Foucault as well, they were barely repentant Marxists. They were, they were I've part never of the read them. I, I don't know. in France in the 1960s. I'm not a postmodernist. Either. Them, I, I just agree that Jean Paul Sartre, for that matter, was. Uh, I mean, I don't know much about postmodernism myself, but I would get, I would, I would hazard to guess that uh, if postmodernism to me, well, to me it means uh, you have different views. Like everyone has their own truth. You know, everyone's perspective is unique. And uh, yeah, what you believe is the truth to you. You know, just because you believe something doesn't make it true. But if you believe it, it's true to you, and so you're going to go out in the world thinking that it's the reality, and you're going to treat world as if that's the reality. So we need to teach people what actual reality is and what their perceptions of it. Not that hard, buddy. By the end of the 1960s, you couldn't be Jeez, conscious. I just and solved thinking. Jordan Peterson I, in like in in a minute and a half from talk from t not even talking to him. This guy's so I don't understand how he how he. Uh, it gotten so far. I just did it right there. And pro-Marxist. I just explained it to him. There was so much evidence that had come pouring in from the former Let's Soviet speed Union. speed this up. From the Soviet Union at that point and from Maoist China. The absolutely devastating... Yeah, well, let's point. compromise. I mean, let's reiterate. So, because you can't just say you solved Jordan Peterson and then not just, you know, just st period, end of sentence. Uh, so, yeah, let's just, you know, whatever I said before. Done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh... Everybody has their own perspective. If you believe, whatever you believe is the truth in your mind. So you're going to interact with the universe and you're going to go out your day as if, you know, if you believe in God as some all-powerful old man in the sky, it's not true. So if you pray to him, he's not going to answer, but you're going to believe it. So when stuff happens, you're going to attribute it to his doing if that's what you're told to do and that's what you think. So it doesn't really make a difference. The, fa the fact is that that is just untrue. That is just provably false. Uh, and then, uh, you know, so you got to move on and update your internal perspective. And then eventually, hopefully, as humans, we can, you know, 
agree on a, on a general thesis, on a theory of existence, which honestly, we should just, you know, that's the biggest one. As soon as we get a theory of everything, you know, that matches uh, quantum mechanics and uh, uh, classical mechanics and has quantum gravity, once we figure that out, which, in my opinion, I think E8, uh, that theory has gone pretty well. The, uh, the quantum gravity research project, their theory, I forget what it's, if it's got a specific name, but the one based on that uh, is correct. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and it seems to work for me. So there you go. Maybe that's wrong. And if it's wrong, then we'll update the, th the theory with evidence and testing. And then there we go. So, uh, yeah, I think I just, there you go. Somebody clip that. I'll clip it and I'll, I'll tweet it to Jordan Peterson. You won't hear from him anymore. He'll, 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 he'll get it. He'll be like, oh, okay, I got you. All right. <laughs> I'll talk to him, though. If he, if he doesn't appreciate the summed up there, I'll, I'll let him ask some questions. Okay, what? <laughs> Hold on. That it was impossible to be apologetic for it. China, right. absolutely. So the Soviet Union. All right, let's yeah, start. With, there's so much evidence. Okay. From the former Soviet Union, uh, from the Soviet Union at uh -huh. that point, and from Maoist China, the absolutely devastating consequences mm -hmm. of the doctrine. I will agree that their doctrine had devastating consequences, but hold on. It was impossible to be apologetic for it by that point in time. I agree. That, yeah, the, the problem was they didn't allow. Uh, I think basically what your problem is, is, you know, they weren't allowed to criticize the government. Uh, they didn't have free speech, which I agree. That's a pretty big problem. That's why they fucked up. If they allowed for free speech, they would have instantly won the Cold War, and uh, the U.S. would would not exist. It would all be the you know the, the the United Soviet Socialist Republics of the world. It would just be a liberated world of anarchy and uh, communism and rainbows and stuff, and we'd be in space. It'd be fine. Uh, but they didn't allow free speech, and so we're here. Hi. So. The French intellectual uh, and the answer to free speech is uh, that it should be allowed absolute the potential for absolute free speech should be allowed uh, and um, in certain circumstances and then other circumstances it shouldn't uh, and there should be limits within certain communities uh, but there have to be places where anybody can just go in and say anything they want uh, it, again, is not everywhere. You should not just go on the street and preach false racism. But if you want to be false and racist, you know, have your tiny little Discord community, but, you know, have, give those people the chance to let it out, and then have a psychologist come up to them and be like, so, why, why do you not, what's wrong with black people again? Like, why, you think their skulls are smaller? Like, you think their brain, like, that's not true, right? You know that, right? You're just angry. Why are you angry? Capitalism made you poor and, you know, promised a lot and you think you're right and it's actually wrong. Yeah, that'll make racism. That, that's, you know, we'll fix that. And then there we go. And then, you know, absolute free speech is good. And then people can be analyzed for mental health because of hatred and things like that. And it's just, it's, uh, you know, your, 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 your thoughts are a little out of whack. Your postmodern uh, interpretation of reality is perhaps... Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, you know, Chaos Monsters would say uh, over here, Jordan Peterson. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, was, you know, so and have those analyzed and be like, all right, let's 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 all right, let's take a second here. Why do you hate these people? Like, why are you afraid of them? Where's your fear coming from? And then you know, hatred, you know, racism, bigotry, it all comes from fear of usually losing power or your you know your food and your your house and everything. You know, no one wants to you know lose power people like to be strong and have freedom so everybody should have it particular just pulled off a slight and if you feel like you don't have it and the, the symptoms for not feeling like you have enough like we've seen control of your life is racism and bigotry which we all are a little bit bigot i'm sorry i'm talking over him uh yeah just give me a second <laughs> um uh you know racism bigotry it's all fear which comes from fear fear of you know your own personal inadequacy and you know so go to a therapist find out why you're feeling inadequate and you know we'll solve that you know give you some power back in your life all right let's see what he said in particular just pulled off the apologetic for it by that point uh -huh. in time so the french intellectuals in particular just pulled Ooh, off the french that's true the french did you know uh that's where uh you know the the Fran the paris commune they almost had communism in the like while well, marx is still alive in the 1800s in late 1800s paris commune look it up 
a sleight of hand and transformed Marxism into postmodern identity politics. And yeah, that that's just where you lose me, buddy. Um, I think that's just flowery language for not liking uh, to be criticized for your own uh, inadequacies. And, uh, you know, are these uh, are these postmodern neo-Marxists in the room right now? <laughs> with us here uh jordan you know they can't hurt you i promise they're not real they're just in your imagination okay what you're referring to is people who don't like to be criticized uh and you know i think yeah, i hit the space bar you may uh you may you may be uh i don't i don't want to shock you uh, uh but you might be one of those postmodern neo-marxists then as well <laughs> oh sorry to break it to you just pulled off a sleight of hand and transformed Marxism into postmodern identity politics. And like we've seen the consequence of that. <laughs> it's, it's not still good. just it's a dead it's, evolution. That's just funny. Hold on. So the French intellectuals in particular yeah, so pulled off a sleight of hand and transformed pulled a Marxism sleight of hand, into postmodern French. identity politics. And like we've seen it. <laughs> Those, those, those damn French! It was the French the whole time! Those damn French! It wasn't the Jews, it was the French postmodern neo-Marxists! That was them! Oh! Dang it! Oh! Those dastardly French postmodern neo-Marxists with their identity politics! Oh! Curses! <sighs> not good well i i have some good news you're right it's not good uh they don't exist anymore i'm sorry and they never did it evolution into a kind of tribalism that's well mm -hmm. that's gonna that will tear us apart on the right and on the left and on the right and he, he is I, right I, that's I true i mean if we I don't have. deal with uh you know insecurity uh and inadequacy feelings that's how fascism happens and uh we will lose everything I'll, also not to mention climate change that's a big one too people for, people forget that we just had a a pandemic that we're still not quite out of yet thanks to you know a, a human incompetency uh but we're getting there and uh you know we just wanted to be like can we just can we just forget about climate change for a minute dude we just had a mini apocalypse and whoa, oh boy, i'm just not feeling it i need a minute <laughs> okay but unfortunately we don't really have a minute uh we have about 50 50 something years maybe 49 now that it's 2021 uh and uh the the clock's ticking just 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 a heads up we don't have to deal with it right this second because we should have dealt with it in the 70s and we haven't yet, so, you know, just start rearing that back up. Let's not forget that that's there. Have a very large collection of socialist <sighs> realist paintings from the former Soviet Union. Wait, what? A very large collection of socialist realist <laughs> that's right, I forgot about this. This motherfucker has uh, an irrational fear of these postmodern neo-Marxists that are out there behind every corner in the white vans and black vans, so, you know, then the vans on the street surveying him. Uh, but he keeps posters on his wall of like Mao and Stalin or just art at least at the very least I bet it looks nice. I like Soviet artwork. I'm gonna look that up Let's see if we can guess what he has in his house a large collection of socialist realistic paintings Let's see what socialist realist paintings there are social Realism Art let's see if we can guess. Oh, you know what? Let's see if we can find out. Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Socialist. <laughs> Paintings. Alright. Let's see. Is that one he has? Maybe. It's just a picture of him next to one. So I don't know. That one's not that great. That one's alright. Uh, I could go for some more colors. This is house. Oh, here's his super duper, I'm so cool, like, creepy, uh, uh therapist, uh, so psychologist. He's not a therapist. That's a very important distinction, is he is a psychologist. He doesn't help people, he just studies the mind. They both study the mind, but therapists study the mind to help people, uh, no, not psychologists, but whatever he is, neuro psychologists. I don't know, whatever the hell his job is, is they just study the mind. They don't care about, uh helping people they just want to watch and judge with their scientific gaze uh oh 
Oh wow, these are his paintings. Well, yeah, it would. I would imagine it was probably not very good taste. So let's see what else there is. Well, we don't know. That could be good taste compared to. Yeah, this is the socialist realism. Ooh, this is a nice mural. Uh, that would be tough to have in your house, though. Especially, I don't really want a picture of Stalin. I would, re I would repaint over Marx or even Kropotkin. That would be a, a nice kick in the balls. Although, look at that though. The Korean flag and the Chinese and the Soviet all together, along with everybody. Oh, there's the anarchists. The black flag um or maybe i'm not sure what that is if that's the no that's a feather so yeah there's the black flag those hmm mm, i uh yeah i would be careful uh i i wouldn't be the one hold i wouldn't want to hold that flag if i were you uh all right so yeah it's, it, Socialist realism, capitalist realism, they are the pretending that it's the only thing that exists. Which, to be fair, socialism is a lot closer to the only thing that can exist. But, yeah. now these paintings aren't even that good. I wouldn't put... I, I want, I want like, legit, like, propaganda posters in my room. That would be sick. Um, communist propa... Why would he literally have these? Like, why why are these the ones that he wants? Like, these are just socialists doing nice... Is he, he just wants that in his house so he can be like, No! They were liars! They said that they were fine! I mean, they have a soldier in this picture, but like... It's not like this. Like, you'd think he would hang this in and be like, Remind, this is propaganda. They're confusing us. I mean, this is, this is in a way a bit more... Nuanced. I don't want to give Jordan Peterson this much of a benefit of a doubt for, you know, thinking about this thing, but luckily, you could argue that having this boring, you know, uh, still life socialism pictures, um, you know, these ones, is a bit more like benign. It's not as, you know, direct and aggressive. I mean, that's. It is still propaganda, but these things are, you know, these ones are made. I mean, these are all probably fake too at this point. But that one's nice though. I like. That. I would have that as a painting. That would be sick. That might be real. Yeah, that one. That one might be a real one. That one's very nice. Yeah, there we go. I don't call Lenin. Lenin. Lenin over Stalin. I'm not a big fan of either, but yeah. Oh, Vietnam. I think I'm totally guessing. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm assuming Vietnam. Oh, Soviet poster from the 70s. Oh, Vietnam. Called it. Called it. I'm not even reacting to the video anymore. I don't care, though. I'm just streaming. This looks cool. I would, I would totally put this in my room. That would be sick. Anyway, back to the video. Where's Jordan Peterson at? Uh, I don't think there's much left to say. Yeah, so talking about his paintings. Realist paintings from the former Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. We all know Propaganda you do because you love it so much secretly. Kind of yeah, he's probably got like a deep like taboo like with his wife. He probably is like, detain me. Be be a be a be a communist uh, uh, d d d torture information officer and, and beat me yeah he has his wife like slap him with a with a uh, riding crop to try to get information out of him in the fucking cold war this is a weirdo of harsh <laughs> impressionist pieces of working class people not I that there's anything wrong reason. with that no, no kink shaming on the smiley's podcast the of that, smiley the stream of those regimes and fair oh, enough, i should I have dm me and Shafi but i don't have on. paintings from the nazi area, in era in my him. house Oh, that's right. No, because he's an actual Nazi. Because he know he, he he's. Let's say there's that's reasoning. That's a puzzlement to me because I regard. Wait, it's a puzzlement to yourself that you. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna give him a second, but all right, here let's. Uh, era in my house, and I wouldn't. And that's been a why? puzzlement to me because I regard the communist, the totalitarian communist regimes as just as murderous as the Nazi regimes. Okay, but if they're equal, why don't you have the Nazis then? Hmm? That is a puzzlement. Yeah, yeah. So let's find out if you found an answer. Because he's also like, damn, they are just as bad as the Nazis, yet I don't have any Nazi paintings. Why? Why is that? Well, let's find out if he's coming up with an, an answer. evil associated with the Nazi regime that seems more... Oh, because he's like... <laughs> people know they're evil. So, you know, I just got to remind people that the communists are evil by having paintings of theirs in my uh, house. Because you're such a so freaking crazy person. about that for a long person. time. And, and then I've been thinking about a, a corollary to that, uh, which is okay, part of the I have problem you. with our current political debate. 
Mm-hmm. So, I'm on, listening. on the right, I think we've identified markers for people who've gone That's too a far we. in radiological So he, he is on the right. He's not a censor. He, I mean, he's not a centrist. He just agreed to being on the right. Part of the problem with our current political debate. So, to that, uh, which is long time. And, mm-hmm. and then I'd be thinking about a, a corollary to that, uh, which is blah, blah, blah. part of the problem with our current political debate. Our current so, political debate. Um, on the right. I think, I think we've, we've yep, yep, yep. So, all right, well, I don't know. I thought he was trying to pretend to be a centrist, but he's on the right. I guess that makes sense. Identified markers for people who've mm-hmm. gone too far in the radio. Yes, we have not. Yes, when people are too far, like when, when people take our ideology too far, you become Nazis. And it looks it's not like, like the marker we've identified is racial superiority. <laughs> okay. And I think we've no. I, I guarantee you have it. If you if 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 Jordan Peterson is not an abject racist, he is definitely a misogynist. One hundred percent. Probably since the end of. So war. maybe not racial. Uh, what was the word he used? Racial superiority, but. G- sex. No, he'd say gender superiority because he this motherfucker got famous because he literally just wanted to misgender so trans people, is which is so fucked up, dude. And I think That's the whole reason he's famous. That's so crazy. Two, Bill C-16, and it was wrong. He, you can't get arrested for even intentionally misgendering a trans person, and that was his whole thing. We're gonna, they're gonna throw us in jail, the postmodern neo-Marxists, uh, Buckley, with their, uh, 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 what's the word, identity politics. Magazine. Um, the David Duke type mm-hmm. types kind of attached themselves to it. Yeah, like you said. realize... <laughs> There are no actual postmodern neo Marxists. There are fucking crazy people on the left too, or who say they're on the left. They're just crazy people. There's crazy people everywhere, but there is still no opposite to the KKK. The cl- there was, they would say that the closest thing to another sort of KKK would be the Black Panthers, but they were nothing like the KKK, but for black people. Now there are, I think there is that weird dude. Uh, who doesn't like Antifa, I, the Black Hammer or something like that, who may be the first actual, um, thanks to the internet, black superiority on the same level. But it's not anywhere near the KKK, because the KKK has is, is been ingrained in, in American culture since its founding. And I don't mean the founding of America, but I mean the founding of the KKK. It has never once been completely disbanded. So no. Here's the boundary. If it's the boundary, why does it still exist? You guys are on the wrong side of the boundary. Why are there still I'm not so many KKK people? Oh, but that's where he says he's not with them. For, for example, as well mm-hmm. in the aftermath of the Because he's Jewish, so he can't he can't be a Nazi. He's the closest thing to a Jewish Nazi there is. Though. He just doesn't. He just likes Jews. So the, he just thinks so they're what's superior. What's interesting is that on the conservative side of the spectrum, we've mm-hmm. figured out how to box in the radicals and say, no, you're outside the domain of acceptable... Yeah, as, and this, the right is the most cohesive group of political influencers in history, whatever they were. Leftists always lose because all we're doing is disagreeing with each other. So, you are, this dude is so incredibly wrong. I cannot believe people believe this guy. We know that things can go far too This is wild. And we, there would be leftists if we got along. We don't get to disagree with each other. We're all just, I am a, a, a post-sadist, ultranational, or what, not ultranationalist, but Antifa, authoritarian, tanky, blah, 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 uh, socialist, democracy, social democrat, democratic socialist, uh, like, uh, literally two different things. They're not two different things. They are technically, in fact, two different things, but they are basically the same thing. No. <laughs> It's exactly what it sounds like. It's just one is less, more central than the other. By like But we don't know what the markers are for going too far on the left. And I would say- Oh yeah, and actually this is the one thing I think I like here, because I have seen this a long time ago. On those who are liberal or left-leaning to identify the markers of pathological um, extremism on the left and And to distinguish themselves from the people who hold those pathological Mm -hmm. viewpoints. This is the one thing what he's about to say, I think that ever Jordan Peterson has said that might actually have some validity. And to I it. don't see that that's being done, and I, I think that's a that's a and I'm happy to do it. Failure, and it, it but get to the point, bro. Like, the I'm, build, I'm building you up here. Have their point. 
they're they're driven fundamentally by uh -huh. the horror of, of inequality, inequality. Mm -hmm. catastrophes that inequality produces. All right, Mr. Flower language, speed up. So to be concerned about that political social force, and it does produce, it can produce catastrophic consequences. Yes, inequality. So to be concerned about that politically is reasonable. Mm -hmm. But we do know that that concern can go too far. Mm -hmm. okay, so I've suggested that there's a triumvirate of concepts that bear the same... That the one assertion the he ever made that might have some validity. ...catastrophic outcomes when implemented as the racial superiority. Uh -huh. Diversity, inclusivity, and equity as a triumvirate. Even though you can have... This is, this is the other reason why people think that he's smart, is he just can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk without saying a single thing. ...an intelligent conversation about two of those anyways. But I would say that uh -huh. of the three, equity... Come on, buddy. Is the most unacceptable catastrophic outcome oh, implemented man. as the racial security. Oh shit! Is the most unacceptable. Why? The doctrine of equality of outcome, and it's equity is not the the the. Oh, he be, he fucked he beefed it, dude. He, he I was giving I this is what I was afraid of. I was like ah why just say it? Don't let me build it up too much. And he beefed it. I knew it. <sighs> equity is not equality of outcome. What he what he said? Equality of outcome? Bad idea. What we want is a quality of opportunity. We want everybody to have the closest thing to the same amount of opportunity as everybody else. No one should be born with vastly more opportunity than anybody else. Um, and I agree with him that. I think that that is, on the left, the bad idea. But it's not what equity means. Equity is... Equ the only way to create a quality of opportunity is through equity. Equity, equality is what he's saying is the problem. Putting ev everybody in the same box, everybody saying everybody is exactly the same and smashing down the smart people and bringing up the stupid people, which is, again, the problem is we're not bringing anybody down, we're bringing everybody up to the same level as everyone else, which is which requires equity. E the difference between equity and equality. Equality is... E the best way I heard it, equality is everyone gets the, gets a pair of shoes. That's equality. Equity is everybody gets a pair of shoes that fit. You don't. Everybody could get a pair of shoes if we all just made a billion of the same exact pairs of shoes. But not everybody's gonna fit the same size. Not everybody wants to wear the same shoes. So everybody can have a pair of shoes, but they don't work necessarily. So if we make sure that everybody gets a pair of shoes that fit and that they like, that's equity. Simple. Equality is bad. Equity is good. So he, he fucked it up. But is the most that's the only thing the he's ever said in his life. That was, that's why it wasn't the only good thing he ever said. It's the only thing that was close to being a good thing that he's ever said in his entire life. thoughtful on the left should draw the line. Say, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. Equality of opportunity... Not oh, we've got, enough, a, we've, got a, we've got a, we've got a, we've got a, we've got a message in the chat. I need to make this bigger. There we go. Uh, all right. So communism. Okay. Ooh, superstition, fear, and jealousy. Legalized dueling. I came here to answer for Professor Peterson. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I would like you to come on, memes, please. I would like to speak to you face to face. Uh, communism caused millions of deaths as a result of the plan. Now, this is what I was talking about. That's not communism. That's what's known as... They called themselves communists, but they weren't. The USSR, uh, the, uh, you know, China, and, you know, uh, you know... If you think that the USSR are communists, and you think that China is communist, especially... If you think communist China is communist just because they say they're communists, then you must think North Korea is democratic because they're called the Democratic Republic of Korea. So, uh, just because they say it doesn't mean it's true. Communism has a definition. The definition is a stateless, classless, moneyless society. Essentially, anarchism. But anarchism through mutual aid, mutual benefit, is what communism is. They are literally synonymous. The same thing. Classical libertarianism or libertarian socialism, they all mean the same thing. What... <laughs> The, what has what people say is co when when communism fails when the like, communism has never worked what they're actually talking about are command economists or dictatorships you know the you know the USSR and China and Cuba and everything like that and Vietnam which some of them are actually still around I mean Cuba at this right moment is not doing so well but that's because they haven't gotten the vaccines and the only reason they're in the news is because they're still technically call themselves communists even though they're not 
uh, and the U.S. doesn't like them, and so that's why the U.S. has made a big deal out of them, even though there has been tons of protests all over the world that haven't gotten nearly the same thing. But either way, so communism has a definition, and command economies have a definition. Uh, the thing is, people who, like China, calls themselves communism, but they do not meet the definition for communism. They call themselves communists, but they meet the definition for uh, command economies, which means, which is where instead of having capitalism is when you have private ownership, communism is when you have universal ownership, and command economies is where you have governmental ownership, where the government owns all the means of production and all the private property, and, and in some cases personal and public property all becomes uh, government property. Uh, and that is a command economy, which is every, and different levels of that are every example of people saying uh, communism has never worked. And almost every single time, uh, that co that that communist revolution happens there are actual anarchist communists who are part of that the real communists but the tankies the command economists the the word we use as anarchists and, and leftists we call them tankies the people who still think Stalin was a good guy which believe it or not there still are uh, um, he some of them even actually unironically like North Korea which it blows my mind I cannot believe anyone would simp for North Korea. It's it's insane, but they exist. Anyway, those people are tankies, and tanky slash command economy is the government ownership. Basically, uh, it's the same thing as um, monarchy, basically, where, you know, the king owns everything. He owns the land. Uh, uh, and then anarcho-capitalism uh, is just feudalism because, uh, you know, uh, because instead of the king, it's the corporation, and if there's different corporations, they form different feudal, uh, you know, uh, aristocracies and blah blah blah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So command economies never work, but communism has uh, never been allowed to happen because everybody who isn't communist tries to stop them. Uh, but it will hopefully, or you know, we're all gonna die from climate change. So there's that. That's separate. Anyway, back to Jordan Pretty Peterson. Well Let's finish him. Thing. Nope, you, yeah, equality of outcomes sucks. I agree. That's the there. that's now, the line. Maybe that's yeah. wrong. Maybe it's not equity. That's my candidate for it. Well, it's but not it's equity because that's what a word has a different definition. But okay, equality of outcome. Yes. That we don't know where to draw the line, and that's a. Big no, I agree. I think you're right. I think we draw the line at equality of outcome. So. Um, I can't imagine there's much more he says of substance well, here. Because he doesn't think that there's a room. All right. Oh, he's going to talk about gender shit. All right, hold on. Let's see what he's got. To implement the legislative necessity to eliminate the gender pay gap. Yeah. Well, that's... That... Well, we should just eliminate all pay. <laughs> duh. Just get rid of money and then you don't have a pay gap. Duh. You know. <laughs> Fucking duh. <laughs> Communism. <laughs> um, but no, it's just... It's, it's just a lot of stuff. You know, people have biases and people choose to hire people. It isn't just decided by a bot based on your qualifications. They look at your name. They look at your resume. And, you know, people just end up paying men more and it's just all, men are in charge so and they hire men you know it's just it's like that's that's all uh, it is oh, yes, there there's is. nothing you crazy a it's a pay gap because they on average like they don't literally like just hi i mean some of them do actually hire people. women on a lesser things. wage gap and i heard a great argument to that which a capitalist said which was um well we can't just pay women less because if we did we'd only hire women and <laughs> that was a smart comeback i liked that i was like that makes sense, but in actuality, because your employees can't... Now, that would make sense if everybody knew how much everybody was being paid for. The fact that everybody gets paid their own wage and you're not supposed to discuss your pay with other people, um, it, uh, it... I lost my... Oh, yeah, because you can't discuss your pay with other people, uh, you pay everybody as little as possible, so it doesn't matter. Which also... And because women are less like... So women not only know how much they're being paid or how little they're being paid, as it might be, in comparison to their other potentially male co-workers in the same position or just in general, uh, they are also less likely on average to be the ones to stop, talk, have a confrontation with their boss and ask for a raise. Now, obviously individuals are, you know, individuals, but on average is all I'm talking about. So uh, statistically, therefore on average, that would lead to logically women would get paid less. 
So it that there we go. And gender pay gap solved too. Boom. I'm on a roll here. Jordan Peterson, gender pay gap solved. Solved. It's not even murky. Once it starts to get murky, it's just. Oh, okay. It's not murky yet. Once it starts to finally get murky. win if you play identity politics. There's a bunch of reasons. Like I agree. No. Uh. Well, I agree to a certain point. There's a, okay. Identity politics bad. Uh, intersectionality, good. Intersectionality, it, the difference between intersectionality and um, identity politics is identity politics is saying, well, I'm a blank, so I know blank. Whereas intersectionalism is knowing that we all belong to a bunch of different identity groups. I'm white, I'm male, I'm 26, I live in America, I live in New England specifically. I, you know, I have tons of, you know, data-based... Uh, demographic groups that I, I join into. Identity politics is saying that I am a member of this group, of group X, and therefore you need to blah blah blah, which in some cases is true. You know, things are different when you talk to different people of, you know, different groups. But that also means that things are different when you talk to people in the, who I, who have the same group. When you share tribal, you know, uh, similarities with people you know when I talk to other guys there's you know guy stuff and I talk to you know my, I have friends of all you know races and genders but you know we all talk differently and we talk differently when we're with together you know so everybody you know we all have our different identity groups um, but identity politics is you know just people you know getting too much into it but uh, you know that's why it's solved with intersectionality realizing that we are all you know I'm not just a white male you know, I am, I'm more, I'm, you know, Phil, I'm Smiley P, I'm, I'm a whole individual unique human being, you know, I have millions, infinite, I have infinite different dimensions of my personality, uh, and, uh, more than most people, no, just kidding, <laughs> uh, infinitely more than most people, no, everybody has an infinite number of, of things, that's why I can joke about that, because we all have infinitely more than everyone else in infinitely different categories, so it's all infinite, so it all just ends up being the same. Infinitely more and, you know, you can have inf infinity and infinitely more are both infinity, so who cares, and they're infinitely different and they're infinitely the same, that's, the, infinity is, is not, <laughs> infinity is crazy. Anyway, there you go, see, uh, memes in the YouTube trap is from Mass, so we're both New England people, we share that in common, you know, we're both Jedi, no, he's not a Jedi, he's a Pathfinder, he's like Jedi, except apparently they have a bigger uh, demand or, or use for kyber crystals, if you've seen our uh, our chat with each other, we're, we're planning on working together more, so that's why I was inviting him on earlier. Um, anyway, so I think we're done with Jordan. Let's see if he's got anything else. Let's we'll give him. Yeah, yeah. Let, no, let's not. Let's later. push for oh, no, quality no, no. of opportunity and try and, and so intersectionality. You don't solve that, you don't solve the problem at all. Right, figure problem? that out later. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, no. That's the you know what? That's the equality of outcome is the oh, thing he's saying. Problem. If we don't worry about that now, it's yeah, like okay. The at all. Who, who we solved it. Bureaucracy. It's all good. Okay, which bureaucracy? A bureaucracy well, of people, a demo one. democracy, a bureaucracy speech. of people who care or are involved and have expertise. Okay, that's problem number one. And it's staffed by exactly the sort of people that you don't want. The intersectional mm -hmm. problem, right? The, yeah, the in, in command economies is what he's talking about, yeah. already hit the problem of intersectionality. It's like, well, we've got race... Oh, he says intersectionality. Right? Oh, okay, let's see. Oh, oh I'm glad we're Next still problem. watching this. Which identity? I bet he gets it wrong again. I bet it's another case of equity. He thinks intersectionality means something that it doesn't mean. That's the intersectional problem, right? The, the radical leftists have already hit one and it's staffed by exactly the sort of people that you don't want to staff it by the way mm -hmm, the bureaucracy next problem which identities that's the yes problem, yes right? the, Boom. the radical leftists mm -hmm. have already hit the problem of intersectionality. uh the answer is democracy voting let let all who matter all who are involved if you want to if you need a bureaucracy of people making a decision about a community you know a, a town you know a town government, like a town bureaucracy that decides, you know, if the roads are good, how the schools are, if they need more funding, blah, 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 and they need, you know, more infrastructure. Uh, instead of, you know, in a command economy, it would be appointed by the, the, the so-called Communist Party, which is actually just the Vanguard Party, which is just, you know, the, the, the group that won the revolution, as he says. Um, so that's not helpful uh what we need is the people to vote if the people who live in the community and will be affected by the decision need to vote on who makes decisions on their behalf and boom transsex tra intersectionality solved like, well we've got race and gender 
Yeah, you shouldn't be on a you shouldn't be on a you know liberal politics is oh let's add you know twenty percent more black people to our uh, you know diversity higher list you know it's just fucking you know t diversity is good honestly those those are a terribly you know misunderstanding it but frankly. You know, the thing is, though, at, on top, it's still the same old CEO billionaires in the top. So the diversity hires don't really actually have a say. Um, some of them might if they're like the only black guy or if they're the only diversity hire and they're afraid of getting sued. They might actually have a little bit more way, leeway, but it's capitalism and everybody's poor. So it's not really helpful. Uh, it's in two gender categories. But you end up with yeah. six intersectional categories. I would love and to see that video started. when it comes out. How many genders? Uh, memes. Hypothetically, memes. there's an infinite number. Actually, your name's memes and you're doing mimetic theory. I, you, know, I, you, you seem like the kind of intersectionality uh, group that works for me. I think, you know, you, you, you like memes. So I'd like to hear what you have to say on, on meme theory and m m memeticism. Racial group. <laughs> you going to include ethnicity? You want to add class to that? You want to add socioeconomic class? How about attractiveness? <laughs> Okay, yeah, we get it. You can you can pick people for bad reasons, but there also are good reasons to vote for people, and that's why we have elections, and that's why we vote, and it's not just appointed by some in a multiplicative fashion. Uh, benevolent dictator on high. Really? Whether that be your boss or the, you know, uh, supreme uh, secretary, grand secretary, or president, or you know, CEO. It's like... It's a complete bloody catastrophe. Yeah, but you ask the people. You put that's what that's what power to the people means. Yep.